Emotion has always been the theme of my exploration, especially the human-machine relationships and human-human relationship mediating by um, so-called emotionally intelligent machines. And I explore it by making myself and facilitate other people to make. Um, I came from a fashion design background and making, which I normally seek emotional qualities by articulating materiality in, la in relation with the body. So in the emerging space of emotionally intelligent machines, and I found myself having this love and hate emotional tension um, with these technological artifacts, my excitement was that with the uh, advancement of affective te technologies, we could push the boundaries of this affective experience design. The frustration is that there's a lot of intelligence in them, but I don't seem to have an um, emotional connection. Um, and I felt there's a um, sensory experience gap. Um, I will have a lot of uh, anticipation before encountering them, and then when I encounter them, I just switched off. Um, it took me a year to figure out my frustration come from two fronts. Um, one is the materiality doesn't invite me to connect or I voluntarily switch off. Second is um, the interaction, the, the mode of interaction is very prescriptive and I'm instructed a way to interact with it. So um, my research question started with how to design a technological artifacts that engage people emotionally. Um, yeah, these are the two, um, I just mentioned uh, realization, the affective quality of the materials and the mode of interaction that enable people's subjective e experience. Um, so according to Brian Masumi, affect is fluid, non-linear, emergent, full of non-consensual potentials enable serendipitous connection and individual interpretation. Um, however, the such potential could be either amplified or flattened by its material embodiment. Um, so since then, I have been looking for programmable material that have the expressive potential to embody the richness, ambiguity, delicacy, and complex spectrum of this topic of affect. Um, I was instantly obsessed when I encounter, oops. When I encounter soft robotics, um, a, a soft robotic graper. So they're elastically soft, versatile, and biologically inspired. I found I could capitalize on soft designs at various levels, surface, movement, mechanism, and mode of interaction. For me, they're essentially programmable machines, but they don't feel or look like machine. Um, and compare with conventional robotics, which is a chain of kinematic rigid uh, movements, um, they allow redundant degree of freedom. This is the definition that I found in paper. The I love the word redundant, although this might, engineers might find it inconvenient. For me, this is a potential to create aesthetic and relational serendipity. Um, so then I was exploring basically what are the effective qualities of this soft robotic material interface, how to design the, the system of interaction to enable people's um, subjective experience. Um, and I'm using studio design by myself um, and also design toolkits to allow other people to experiment with this new, um, new agent. I started with um, some initial exploration on the expressiveness of this material and how we might relate. Um, so I developed these wearable prototypes to connect with biometric sensing to make, uh, to respond to our emotional behavioral cues. And most simply, I put them uh, connect them with a wearable heart rate sensing. So when I'm speaking now, if I'm wearing one of these, um, when my heart rate is, is above 90, they will start to move. I don't see them, but the audience will see it. So it's, it's very interesting to observe um, that the, the relation, how it's perceived. Um, and this has led, uh, this 
give the impression of jewelry like wearable has led to a collaboration with Vogue and Vice to um, push the wearable relation to a prosthetic relation. Um, we were discussing about animals as body parts that move or demonstrate um, visible uh, movements when they are emotionally aroused. Um, like cats have ears, dog, dog tails, and uh, birds have feathers and neck skin. So how about, uh, what if we human are augmented in this way? So this is actually in response to, um, to their uh, experimental program on uncanniness. Um, so unfortunately, they, their release of the edited film has been delayed. So I'm, I'm playing these unedited um, clips. So um, if you can currently don't take videos, the image is fine. So these creatures have their own life um, as they move response to touch. And it's, it's, it's kind of perceived also as a wearable companion. But at the same time, they are or they're ornaments for the body. Um, and also it's another complex story for the people who's viewing it to perceive whether it's part of the body or it's um, separate. Um, it's a very early stage probing. It's more about raising questions rather than giving suggestions. Um, to investigate the second question on how to design this mode of interaction or system to enable subjective experience, um, I feel I need help from people because this is new material. It has a completely emergent behavior. So the, the meaning of it, um, I feel, can't be prescribed by designers. So um, I need help to see how people want to connect, how to uh, connect, whether people connect on, on an emotional level or not, and how, how they want to relate. Um, so I developed, uh, in order to facilitate this co-design making, uh, I develop, developed two um, toolkits. Uh, one is the soft actuator casting toolkit. I don't know if it's the same as you tried this morning. And, and with a collaborator, we developed a mechatronic toolkit so people can just press button to make them move. Um, so they don't have, they can pro, um, so they can, they can, they can just work on their imagination and prototyping their own artifacts um, to investigate movements without the hardship of having to make technology work. Um, this is part of the kit where I give um, this basic. Um, basic movements modules. A typical workshop involves three activities. Um, I'll first invite participants to describe how they connect emotionally with their existing chosen personal objects. Um, and then they will interact with um, the module uh, movement units and document their feeling, um, and I will collect those data. Um, and then they will um, work in groups to imagine and speculating about uh, the applications and possibilities for the artifacts. Um, so this is um, a workshop in uh, a festival state of emotions in Berlin in 2016. Um, where it, we explore the um, ecstasy, um, we're connecting uh, movements to heart rate, um, just wear them on the, on the sleeves or in a space or as an architecture scale. Um, so we designed this um, workshop to the outcome from the workshop participants will be displayed as part of the festival so as this will engage uh, more audience to pass by, and our participants will explain their projects just to amplify the, um, the social discussion on, on this topic. I think the difference I found is um, when, you, when, you give, when I give people soft materials um, to prototype from the beginning, the outcome is very, very different than 
what we see, the uh, companion robots or emotional uh, robots from the market. And I felt, we all felt that's a top-down fashion. Uh, we are trying to grow our own connection with materials and then mold our relation this bottom up. Um, second workshop is um, where it's in, within the Royal College of Art. Um, it's a week-long workshop. It's um, much more intensive making. So um, I have um, 17 master students from 12 different courses from design and artist. So um, the purpose is to um, investigate the emotional properties of this material and what can we do with design, what, what can we do with it, and how we investigate how they disrupt existing emotional dynamics, what new dynamics they might create. Um, so with the same modular movement, um, these are the first batch of experiments. So we had a gallery of movements, a gallery of interaction. Um, I will not have time to elaborate here, but um, maybe I could show the final. Um, the final one is a, f it's a fictional film where they work in groups to create a um, fictional relation scenario. Um, I think the other, the other slide has better um, parts and this slide doesn't show. Um, so, so far people have been having fun engaging with the material itself by playing, using the hand, using the body, and talking about the uncanniness of the sensation. For example, it feels like pet touch, like human touch, weird but kind of nice. Uh, the reflect, reflection is on the material itself. Um, and then it's until we had another workshop last May in Athens where we dedicate the session to touch uh, because that was one major outcome that um, the tactile sensation is it's, um, it's one of the highest impactful uh, on the affective feelings between um, participants and this material. So we have a session dedicated to touch. And it's not until that workshop that we, um, the participants start to talk about the digital enabled properties uh, on top of the, the, the sensual materiality of this. Um, so the project on the left emphasized the social connection. Um, it's a kind of weird project. It's like it's connected chewing gum. So you can feel your mate's um, force of chewing. So you can help each other exercise. Um, and it's a code of communication as well. Um, and you can kind of, this could be a version of social media style that you can, so we're discussing social connection one to one and one, out one to many people. And so you can help many people chewing. Ex <laughs> um, and then many to many. And then so it starts to get a bit, not, not scary, but start being alert that this um, physical uh, becoming digitally transmittable. Um, the project on the right is uh, using um, sensory substitution. So she is distant whisper. She wants to feel um, people's, other people's voice um, by not listening to the detail. Um, so then people realize, oh, actually, you can take any digital input, not only voice, but can also um, 
any kind of sensible data then actu actuate this movement. So this has led to discussion of the new materiality of program material and the awareness of a novel design space. So in, we start to compare um, human affective touch and this simulated affective touch. Um, so the felt sensation generated by the soft robotic actuators cannot remotely be um, at the same level of uh, the nuance and subtlety of um, comparing with interhuman touch. However, there's a new range of unfamiliar but highly effective sensations um, that could be generated and could be made use of. Um, digital features enable new properties um, refer to that th these um, physical sensations could be archived, reproduced, and distributable. So this made up thinking of uh, Walter Benjamin's um, article um, decades ago on the reproduction of image. How does that impact? Now we see this, this wave is a reproduction of physical sensation. Um, of course, I, emphasize, I still emphasize the, the materiality, the quality of the felt sensation, the quality of the materiality. I think as Ingrid's question, when she was asked if the creatures are hard or different material, do people connect in the same way? I think we, when we're using vibrators, that's um, so far quite commonly used for haptic communication, um, you don't get that level of worry or concern or serious discussion. It's only when the materiality, it's have its uncanniness that really feel like something real. Um, so, so it's the coping of um, it's the coping of. Um, so I lost my lines. Um, another comparison: interhuman touch is limited to one-to-one -one scale, limited time and place, and making it ephemeral and unrepeatable, scarce resource. And the digital properties, as we can we can say, it's archivable. Uh, we have one participant say, oh my God, what if I can record my grandfather's touch before he passed away and then it can be replayed. Um, so it can be stored, transmitted remotely and replayed at any time, at any place. So they also enable the scale of interaction to be expanded from one to one to one to many, many to many. And this opens a window to immense design space, but also at the same time, it's quite disruptive to consider we're designing once a scarce resource of sensory and physical experience exclus exclusive to human to be something at our disposal and um, commercializable. Um, so this is very transform. This will have very transformative impact on our relations um, of physical interaction. Um, so we're trying to say this digital, both digit, both material. Sorry, there was a mistake. Uh, on the first line is material property, traditional conventional way, and digital property. Um, so this is the new materiality. We have to combine these two. And so far, uh, there has been a divide because um, the digital properties has been played by the HCI community, computer science um, interaction designer, and. Um, Analog designers and crafts people will examine the. So only when we have this integrated, not embedded technology, but integrated, and as a designer, you have to um, take this whole as a new materiality. And I think um, Michael uh, Weber has already advocated this. Uh, only by integrating the uh, material and the digital, the material and the virtual, that you can close that sensory experience gap that I felt in the very beginning. Um, yeah, so this we kind of saying this designing for synthetic, as design is the science for the artificial. So if we're trying to design now synthetic effective, effective sensory experience design, um, we'll have to consider all the, um, and the above. Um, this is my last slide. So I'm, it, my next um, follow, uh, research step is to focus on exploiting the materiality of tactile just to produce simulated affective touch. Um, and I'll use design toolkits for people to personalize their own experience. 
and provoke the disruptive questions through participatory projects. Um, we have also a group in London that um, it's called Effective Future, trying to put um, designers, artists, engineers, and computer scientists together to um, discuss and prototype um, both at RCA and VNA uh, Museum. So if you're interested, please get in touch. And if you pass by London, we're very happy to invite you for, um, for a talk. Thank you.